Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bance. As always, I am your host, The Bance, and here we are finally on a Friday, which means it is time for our second and final What's Happening in Fashion for the week, so let's just get right into it. And yes, you guys don't have to ask. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you what's with the glasses. Well, you see, over the last couple days, I've been dealing with some insane migraines and if you can tell by the amount of light that's behind me that's used to film these videos that that doesn't really help <laughs> so if i want to get this video out on time and believe me i definitely do this is the only way it's going to happen so just for this one time please just bear with me on this but with all that now said let's move on to our art stories for the day and first up high fructo sat down with artist hot t to talk a little bit about his history and his ideologies and kind of how he came to do the types of installations that he does so i definitely check that out if you're interested and i'd also take a look at this if you're interested in very vital vibrant, colorful, and gradient pieces of art as well. Then Soichi Okumura showed off some of his newest works, and I just adore these. Taking both Chinese inks and other different types of pigments and painting them on a backdrop of silk, we get these bright and cheerful works of art that still feel very soft and almost like watercolor paintings. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend giving this a look. And lastly, Brian Valenzuela showed off some of his newest works, and these are just incredible. Really pushing pointillism to its limits, every single one of these vibrant and hyper detailed works of art is entirely composed of words at a very minute level. And to see pointillism done this colorful and crazy and just this highly detailed is just so mind-blowing to me. And if any of it sounds interesting to you, which believe me it should, I definitely check this out as well. Okay, now moving into our fashion section for the day. First up, brand Billionaire Boys Club showed off their holiday 2018 lookbook and Honestly, I thought it was pretty hit or miss. Although, let's be real here, is that really surprising coming from me? I'm pretty sure I say that about pretty much every single one of their collections nowadays. Now, breaking down this collection, you can really kind of separate the entire thing into two major categories here. First, we have the very heavily 90 inspired pieces. And on the other hand, we have the stuff that feels very synonymous with what you'd expect out of a BBC collection. But starting off with the former, I actually find that these pieces are the highlight of the lookbook for me. I think they did a very nice job really encapsulating that 90s revival that we've been seeing over the last couple years now. However, even for as well executed as these pieces are, I think they rely way, way too heavily on their inspirations here. Those inspirations being specifically Ralph Lauren and even more specifically the CP93 and Snow Beach collections. Because I mean, honestly, if you look at some of the patterns and color usage and just placement of designs on a lot of these pieces, they pretty much go hand in hand. But then moving on to the rest of the collection, the pieces that feel much more synonymous with BBC, there really isn't much to talk about here because, as you'd expect with a lot of the stuff that is now synonymous with BBC nowadays, it, it just sucks. It, it really just sucks. And I'm really not trying to trash the brand here. Well, this time. It's just that it seems like they took all the time and effort and creativity they had and pushed it all entirely into the Ralph Lauren-esque pieces and just kind of left all the rest of the collection here fall off to the wayside. And it's unfortunate too because they should really be propping up their more synonymous stuff because when it comes to stuff like this very heavily inspired stuff, they can't keep it up just because one, the style's not going to be around forever, and two, you can't just be pulling ideas this blatantly from other 
brands. It just doesn't work that way. So all in all, it's not a terrible collection by any means, especially if you're a fan of that 90s revival and more specifically just anything that Ralph Lauren has reissued over the last two years. But it really makes me wonder where the brand will be going in next season, especially if this 90s revival slowly starts to simmer because based on the rest of this collection here, it's probably not going to be good. Then, for all of you older streetwear heads out there, this will definitely be a surprise for you. Brand Fresh Jive showed off their holiday 2018 lookbook, and oh my god, they're back. Now, for those of you who may not know or may just be too young to remember, Brand Fresh Jive was a legendary streetwear brand back in the day, and I actually honestly mean that. Renowned mostly for its politically charged commentaries, as well as its counterculture and often very controversial imagery, even more so than many other brands at the time that were doing the same thing, such as Supreme and Fucked. And you could probably trace this brand here back to being the main predecessor to brands such as FTP and Skim Milk nowadays too. However, the brand died back in 2009, and what I mean by that is that back then it was announced that the brand would no longer be doing graphic anything for the most part, instead opting for doing blank pieces with very minimal logos instead, and it was very unsure of whether or not they would ever go back to their old style ever again. But recently, especially if you've been paying really close attention and kind of had your ear to the pavement, you've heard some little rumblings and rumors here and there that there was talk that Fresh Jive would be possibly starting back up again. Well, here they finally are with this holiday 2018 lookbook here, and honestly, I think it's a pretty good start. What we're seeing here in this collection is a mixture of both their styles, it seems, with a bunch of more colorful and basic logo pieces on one side, mixed in with a couple of graphics and slogans more along the lines of what the brand used to be known for on the other. But even for the amount of variety that we're seeing in all the pieces here, there is one major thing I want to point out, and that is just how nuanced this lookbook feels. Even for as dark and edgy as some of these graphics and ideas might seem, nothing here really feels forced, and everything seems to be or feels very easily wearable, even if you're not somebody who wears this style very often or even at all. My only real complaint here is that the prices are definitely much more on the expensive side for streetwear. I mean, just for an example, the t-shirts all start at 55, but seeing as how every single piece of this collection is made in Los Angeles, I can at the very least let it slide a little bit. So all in all, a really nice, albeit slow, return to form from Fresh Jive here. But in all honesty, I'd really love to see them ramp it up in future seasons. Alright, and finally, brand Online Ceramics showed off their Fall Winter 2018 collection, and it's interesting to say the least. So Online Ceramics started back in 2016, and it's definitely one of the frontrunners riding the wave right now of kind of that psychedelic meets DIY streetwear that we've been seeing so much of nowadays. Alongside other brands such as Advisory Board Crystals and Cactus Plant Flea Market and Bianca Shandong just to name a few. However, unlike all those other brands that I mentioned who seem to really take inspiration from these ideas and era, Online Ceramics is really the only brand that feels like it was born from this time rather than inspired by it, which can be seen through its use of many hippie-esque ideologies and slogans and heavily influenced drug graphics and... Oh my god, Grateful Dead imagery? Did I forget to mention the Grateful Dead imagery? But even for as bizarre and trippy as it all may seem, it's actually very well done. And I mean, the tie-dyes are nice, the details on the graphics are clean for as clean as they can be. And surprisingly, it's actually a lot, lot cheaper than a lot of the other brands that I mentioned previously as well. 
though it's still definitely on the expensive side. So if you are a fan of this kind of new era of streetwear, or maybe you just kind of like the tie-dye or DIY aesthetic of it all, or hell, maybe you're even just a huge fan of the Grateful Dead. Whatever your case, if any of that sounded interesting to you, I highly, highly recommend checking out this brand here. And finally, let's move into our articles for the day. And first up, Grail did another very nice history of this time on the Aloha shirt, so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the history of that, I definitely give this a read. Then Quartzy sat down with David Fisher, the man who started High Snobiety, to get his take on the industry and how it's evolved since he started, as well as just the internet's fashion space as a whole. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, I'd check this out. And lastly, the New Yorker sat down with Elijah and Alex of, surprise, surprise, online ceramics. So if you definitely want to learn a little bit more about their history and get a deeper dive into what the brand is as a whole, then I definitely give this a read as well. All right, guys, and with that, we've reached the end of our second and final What's Happening in Fashion for the Week. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and as always, if you want to read any of the articles I talked about today or see any photos from lookbooks I wasn't able to include, I've linked everything I've talked about today in the description down below. And thank you guys once again for watching my videos and supporting my content and and putting up with the sunglasses for today. I hope you all have a great weekend ahead of you, and as always, until next time.